Long Live the Kings began 30 years ago as a single project in a remote coastal watershed. As we celebrate our 30th anniversary, our work and our impact has expanded throughout the Pacific Northwest. All along, our guiding principle has remained the same. The future of salmon is in our hands. Our Lilywap facility represents an innovation in conservation-based fish rearing practices. We are raising these fish for survival. Thanks, Rick. Great. <laughs> Our conservation program is much different than a traditional hatchery program in that we are allowing the natural spawners, the wild fish, to come back, choose their nest site and their spawning partner, and lay their eggs. In a traditional hatchery program, this sort of just all happens in the place of a bucket. I love this. This time. Now they're free. We are truly one piece of a larger puzzle. Long Live the Kings is trying to work across that puzzle. And together we have seen great success in the number of fish that come back to spawn and also in the number of fish that migrate out as juveniles. The leadership before me foreseen the future, but we couldn't do anything about it. Now we can, now we have the science. A lot of tribes talk about looking seven generations out I think it's at a critical mass at this point. We can't look at that far down the road without acknowledging that in three generations from now, we'll have huge problems 100 years from now. So Long Live the Kings and the tribe have, have been partnering for many years. Long Live the Kings wants to build up the science. That's what the tribes are doing. Long Live the Kings and the Port Gamble Slalom Tribe have worked together to try and figure out if there is something that can be done to help mitigate the effect of Hood Canal Bridge. And the first stage in that is understanding how the bridge actually affects fish moving past it. We appreciate all the work that they're doing. The Sailor Sea Marine Survival Project really covers all of the Sailor Sea. It starts in the rivers and tracks the migration behavior and survival of fish through the marine environment to the Pacific Ocean. We want to understand where mortality is occurring and what factors are affecting mortality of steelhead as they migrate through the sound. Now we got 20 minutes. Okay, go to town. Let's get that anchor put in. Are you uh, feeling any current? Negative, no current. Okay, let's get busy. So the Nisqually dive team is putting down uh, hydrophones to listen for uh, steelhead that are migrating past. Long Live the Kings is really fostering um, science-based management. It's been great to have them moving this whole ball forward and setting this up to where we can do our work. The hope and expectation is that that's gonna lead to improved survival, more salmon, and a better understanding of how to protect them in the future. This is my life. It's my passion. Been fishing here for the last little over 20 years. There's been a lot of changes over the last 20 years here. You know, we're trying to get back to where you can still keep two fish. Our hatchery fish, they're here for everyone to catch. It also puts food in the water for all the other sea life. The economics of fishing doesn't matter where it is, whether it's in the San Juans, down sound, it's important to everybody. I want to make sure that our grandchildren and our grandchildren's grandchildren will have plenty of wild salmon forevermore. So I'm passionate about doing whatever we can to restore this amazing resource. What's special and unique about Long Live the Kings is that they're great collaborators. They get people that have an interest in salmon to cooperate. They're the team builder. We need to do everything we can to restore that population. We need to make sure that we do not screw this up.